So let's visit once again what are the governing equations in a specific, this specific uh, continuum media that we call fluids. So first we have the, the classical conservation of mass principle, the classical continuity equations. Notice that here we start also using the upper dot to denote a material derivative with respect to time. Here we have the Cauchy's motion equation that comes out from the linear momentum balance. We have C, we recognize that equation. B dot stands for the acceleration. Then we have the angular momentum balance equation, the symmetry of the Cauchy's stress tensor, the energy balance, that's what we saw as common of fluids and solids, this stands for any continuum media. And this makes a grand total of eight partial differential equations. And then on top of that, we obtain, after the visiting the second principle of thermodynamics, the, uh, sec the, the Clausius-Planck inequality and the heat flux inequality. I insist that these are not equalities, these are not equations, they are inequations. So we cannot consider them as uh, equations to solve the unknowns of the problem, but rather in equations to determine what of the possible solutions of the uh, PDA, PDA equations are physically meaningful or not. So after that, we have to, that is common for all solids and fluids. And then specifically for fluids, which just saw what we call the constitutive equations in the general sense for fluids. So here we have the thermomechanical constitutive equations. The stresses are related to, in that case, is not the strains, but the rate of the strains in terms of the viscosity is land and mu. And then that's a newness that appears in fluid mechanics. We, we have the, th the thermodynamic pressure, P. So the stresses have a part, which is the pressure, plus something that resembles pretty much the elastic constitutive equations, just changing lambda and mu by viscosities and changing the strains by rate of the strains here. So this is a set of six, six equations. Now I'm already considering the symmetry of sigma. Then we have some equations that we haven't explicited yet, which is the entropy constitutive equation typically is, again, an equation that provides what is the value of the entropy in terms of the rate of strain, the density, and the temperature. Then we have the thermal constitutive equation, the Fourier's law, which said that the uh, heat conduction vector is proportional to the gradient of the, of the temperatures through the conductivity property K. And then finally, we have two additional algebraic equations that provide what are the what is the internal an energy, the density of the internal energy, energy in terms of the density and temperature, and that is what you call the caloric state equation. And then we have that one, which states a relationship between the, the uh, density, the pressure, and temperature, which is called the kinetic state of equation. OK, now counting, we see that we just add to these equations. We add these other equations. We have a grand total of 20 PDE with 20 unknowns. So finally, the problem is solvable. We can solve, at least theoretically, the problem. These are the unknowns, the density, the velocity, the stresses, the, the uh, internal energy, the heat conduction vector, the temperature, uh, the entropy, and finally, the pressure. The point is that this is a large system. That's too large. 20, a system of partial differential equations with 20 equations and 20 unknowns is, I mean, we cannot handle with it. So now we do whatever it's possible to simplify that. And there is a situation that we are going to consider in almost all cases, which is the situation in which this equation is a specific. That is a situation in which that, that equation d doesn't depend on the temperature. So that equation uh, states directly that there is a dependence of the density in terms of the pressure 
or the pressure in terms of the density, but not involving the temperature. This is a very specific case of fluids where we can do reasonably this equation, which are called barotropic fluids. The term barotropic, we just mentioned that in the previous chapter, refers to the case in which that equation doesn't depend on temperature. And then there is a one-to-one -one relationship of density and pressure. That is the case. So there is a relationship, I mean, not necessarily linear, that says that as we increase the pressure, in general, the, the thermodynamic pressure, we increase the density. Even there is a possibility that the pressure is negative. The pressure could be negative. That, by the way, is something that maybe you are finding this term in your future professional work. This is called cavitation. Cavitation is a case in which pressure in a fluid becomes negative. So there is life for negative thermodynamic pressures. Okay? But in general, for real standard cases, pressure is positive, and then density increases with uh, pressure. So that law, whatever it is, that is the version of this uh, kinetic state of equation for barotropic fluids. And look, what happens under that assumption, whenever we can discard temperature here? That from all the equations we have just seen, we can just pick up a number of them, typically the conservation equation, which is one equation, the, the, sorry, the continuity equation, the linear momentum balance, the first, uh, the Cauchy's equation, which are three equations, the thermomechanical constitutive equation, which is for Newtonian fluids is that one, which is six equations, I've already considered the symmetry of sigma here, and then this equation, which is the version of the kinetic state equation for barotropic fluids. And look, if we count here, we count that we have 11 equations with only 11 unknowns. These unknowns are the ones that are more mechanical. So typically, density, velocity, stresses, pressure is that part of the behavior of a fluid that mechanical engineers, including fluid, uh, civil engineers, are interested in. Of course, there are other variables, which are, you know, the, the temperature, the entropy, the flux, the, 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 the conduction flux vector, but this can be obtained in a second stage by solving the remaining equations. But these are not of our interest in general. So this is a very case in which the mechanical problem solving these equations, and this unknown, sorry, and the thermal problem solving the remaining of the knowns are uncoupled. They can be solved first by solving the mechanical equation, the, the mechanical problem, which is just uh, 11 equations with 11 unknowns, and then the remaining 10 equations with 10 unknowns. So we will concentrate mostly in this situation. So these will be the equations that we're going to face. I mean, being aware that we have done this hypothesis, which is pretty assumable for uh, civil engineers, because that situation, or even more, the situation in which rho is equal to constant. So when this, this uh, uh, curve is a straight line, horizontal straight line, rho the same constant for every pressure, which is mostly uh, reasonable for our fluids, typically water. Okay? But it's a specific case. Incompressible fluid, that means the density is well constant, is in a specific case of this uh, kinetic state of equations for barotropic fluids. Okay, so this is the scenario where we are going to work.